Hello, in this video you'll learn how to do spatial interpolation of borehole data with PC Raster Python. This video follows the tutorial on GISOpenCourseWare.org. You can find the link in the description of this video. For this video I assume that you've installed Miniconda and created the environment and downloaded uh, the tutorial as explained in the previous video. Um, a nice trick is that you can pin the terminal to the taskbar. You can pin anything from the start menu to the taskbar by clicking right. So you can uh, launch it quicker. And of course in this course we will use the prompt um, a lot. So let's first activate the tutorials environment that we've created before and change the directory to the PC Raster tutorials, in my case on the Z drive. And then we launch JupyterLab by typing JupyterLab. Now JupyterLab will start in your browser. And let's set it up for our uh, project here on groundwater interpolation. So I go to the subfolder groundwater interpolation where I find the data and the tutorial. The tutorial is in the Jupyter notebook. If I double click, it will open in a tab. It's important to link the Jupyter notebook to a console. So click right and choose new console for notebook. This will add a tab with the console, a Python console. And it's also useful to have a terminal. You can drag these tabs to the position where you want them. So we can have several items here on the screen that we will use. The notebook, the Python console, and the terminal where we can use the command line interface commands that you learned in module one. So now I'm set up to run uh, code from the Jupyter notebook, but I can run the same code also from the console. And uh, because they are linked, the line numbers uh, are following each other. So if I run first something in the Jupyter Notebook and then on the console, the line numbers will follow up each other because it uses exactly the same um, kernel. So I've imported PC Raster and uh, OS package. And uh, first we need to convert the CSV file to the PC Raster map format. And in fact, that is a command line uh, command called to map. If I type call to map, I get an explanation on how to use it. We can also find this in the documentation of uh, PC Raster. And uh, if I list the directory, I see I need to go to the data directory. And there I can have a look at the CSV file by using the type command. And here I see that the fourth column is the uh, groundwater depth. And then we have an X and a Y coordinate. In a projection, if you receive a CSV file from somebody, then uh, the projection also need to be given to you because this is not stored in the file. Here we uh, are not caring about that. So I can use call to map and uh, the data scalar. So you use uh, dash S. The X column is column number two. The Y column is number three. And the value column is number one. Then the CSV file is the input. And I give an output file name, which is a PC raster map. I call it borehole depth.map. And it needs to use the properties of our clone map. Clone map is a mask uh, which uh, defines the extent, pixel size, and uh, coordinate system. So now we've imported uh, the boreholes. It says it read 220 records. And they're all inside, but there are some cells with more than one record. In the Jupyter Notebook, you can see how to execute uh, a command line command uh, from Python using os.system and then the command string. Now let's uh, check the result. There's the Aguila command that we can use to uh, visualize PC raster maps. Uh, note that the um, map will pop up behind your um, web browser. So you need to go to the taskbar and to um, find uh, the map. Now, for the Python part, you can see that uh, we are not yet in the data folder, so I need to change the directory. And these are a few Python commands that you can use to uh, run uh, command line commands. So I change the directory to uh, data. I can then use again this uh, print os get cwd, current working directory. And I see that I'm now with Python also in the data folder. And because the Jupyter Notebook is linked, also the Jupyter Notebook is now in that uh, folder. So now I can uh, read the map from uh, that we created from call to map. 
but with the uh, borehole depth if i use tap i get uh, a list of files that correspond to the pattern that i was typing so that makes it faster to select the right file name and avoid typos and then i can use the agila command to um, visualize this borehole depth map and note that also here it's behind the browser and so you need to be aware that it doesn't pop up in front so now we can interpolate using the uh, inverse distance interpolation um, there's a pc raster operation called inverse distance and it needs a mask which is the extent that will be uh, interpolated uh, we need the scalar raster layer with the points and we need to uh, have the power normally we use a power of two a radius and a maximum number of points that will be used in the interpolation we will set that to zero so first we uh, read the clone map that we will use at, uh, as a mask and then we can uh, execute this uh, line so we can also execute this from the Jupyter Notebook and you see here that we are at line number 9. So number 8 was typed in the Python console and number 9 was executed. So they are linked and follow each other. So if you define variables in the notebook or in the console, then uh, they are recognized. So let's uh, visualize. Note that there's a difference between using uh, Agila from the Python console or from the terminal. From the Python console, you visualize uh, variables that are in memory, and also the title bar of the map uh, is a bit cryptic. Um, from the terminal, you can visualize a .map file that is saved on your disk. So uh, to show that, I can uh, report uh, this variable to a .map file. So with the report function, we can write maps to disk borehole depth idw is the variable and then in quotes here i have the string of the file name borehole depth idw.map and then i can simply run agila from the terminal and also there it pops up in the back and i will see here the result but now the title bar shows the file name which is much clearer in uh, practice so use agila from the uh, Python console just for quick checks and for final results. Uh, save it to the disk and uh, use Agila from the command prompt. So IDW is one way of interpolating uh, points. Now we'll have a look at uh, using TSEM polygons. And the steps are assign a unique ID to each borehole, then assign to each pixel the closest borehole ID and then the corresponding values of the depth. So I run this um, defined operation to get a Boolean layer, which is true at the borehole depths and false at the others. And this is then the result. You see, I now mix the uh, uh, notebook executable lines with uh, the console ones, which is perfectly okay because they're linked. So now we have a boolean with uh, true for the boreholes and false for the rest. Uh, we can uh, give each borehole a unique ID and that will be a scalar result and therefore we also convert it to a nominal. And then uh, this is the result, a nominal layer with a unique value for each borehole. If you zoom in, you can find there the boreholes and you can query the values. Then we need to use the spread zone operation to uh, create these uh, decent polygons with the unique numbers that we have assigned. So it needs uh, the borehole ID, initial friction of zero and uh, friction uh, distance uh, for each cell at one, uh, which means basically that uh, the distance is one pixel. That's the unit. And this is then the result. Very nice. Uh, polygon map but now we need to assign the values of the borehole depth to each decent polygon and we can use that with area minimum or area maximum because in the area there should be only one uh, borehole and if I execute it and visualize that then um, this will be uh, the result if we compare IDW with uh, decent polygons very different results, so it really depends on the amount of points that you have and the assumptions uh, for the interpolation.
I can uh, write these results to disk using report. So the variable borehole depth tson will be written to a string with the file name borehole depth tson dot map. Shift enter to execute. And then in the terminal, I can visualize this. You can also use uh, the prompt in the same way. It's exactly the same. And here we visualize both layers. And in the title bar, you can see which is which. Therefore, it's more useful to use the terminal for that. And we can compare the results because these viewers are linked. You can use file exit to uh, exit all the linked windows. Now for IDW, there was a nice uh, operation. Uh, it would be really nice to have a Python function that does the same for TSEN in an easy way. We can write that with the knowledge that we have. So you can write it here in the uh, notebook, but we can also create uh, a Python file. If we choose here Python file, it opens uh, an editor. And if we drag it there to the right, then uh, we can have on the left the notebook. And next to it, we can write uh, the script based on uh, what we learned. So first we need to import PC Raster. And then we define a function called TSEN. And it needs uh, one argument, the borehole depth. And uh, first we need to uh, get a Boolean layer, which gives true for the boreholes and false for the rest of the raster. Then we need to give unique IDs using unique ID, but that results in a scalar and we need nominal. So we also convert to nominal. And then we can get the TSEN IDs. So that's the polygon map, but then with the unique IDs with the spread zone function with the cell size as the unit. So therefore the last argument is a one. And then the result borehole depth TSEN is the area maximum of the borehole depth and the TSEN ID. So for each polygon, it will find uh, the maximum value in the polygon. And this uh, will be returned after executing the function. So we have created a function to calculate TSEN polygons from uh, pixels. And here we can uh, run it. So we read um, the points from the map. So the borehole depth uh, PC raster map. And then we create a new variable depth TSEN. And we use our TSEN function. And it needs as an input the borehole depth. So that's depth. And then we want to see the result. So we can use Aguila. And we can also save the result to disk using report. So this is our script. We can uh, save it to a Python file. So we use uh, save Python file as. And save it under the data folder so we don't have to uh, deal with um, the paths because our file names here are defined uh, in the current folder, which is the data folder. And I call it tson.py. When I save it, I can find it there. I can create a console for this editor. So now it's linked and then I can uh, run the code. I can run line by line or I can run all the code. And here you find the result. And here you can also see that depth tson.map was created. And you can run this uh, Python script from any terminal that has access to uh, Python. So also your Miniconda prompt. And then you just type Python tson.py and it will run. You see that the prompt now uh, hangs. That is because the Aguila map is in the background and uh, it will give the prompt only back if you have closed uh, Aguila, because then it will go to the next line of uh, the script, which is uh, nothing, so it closes the script.